The gospel reading for this fourth Sunday of Advent comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning at the 39th verse. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judea highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do, you ha why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Redeemer Jesus the Christ. Amen. Did you know that with each second, four babies are born in this world? That makes it sound like a common occurrence, but when it happens in your family, it's an extraordinary experience. Becoming a new mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, or grandparent certainly changes lives. So this means that with every second, the lives of four entire families somewhere in this world are turned upside down, inside out, and even sideways. To put it simply, regardless of how frequently babies enter our world, babies change things, and the changes are truly significant. Many of us have experienced firsthand the changes that babies create in our families. There are necessary changes like baby-proofing rooms. There are forced changes like parents adapting to the lack of sleep. There are blessed changes like the joy that the new little life brings into a family. Parents can typically find common experiences with other parents, even though every experience of bringing a baby into the world is different from family to family. Mary, the mother of Jesus, became a first-time mother in absolutely the most uncommon of ways. She was visited by an angel who told her that she would give birth to God's son. She was poor, uneducated, and she was promised in marriage to a man who was not the father of the child that she carried. She may not have seemed worthy or equipped for her role in the birth and life of the Messiah, but nonetheless, she was chosen and was willing to have her whole world turned upside down. The story of Mary begins in Luke with the story of the Annunciation. The Annunciation is part of Mary's story that many of us may be familiar with. It's the story of when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and tells her that she will bear God's son, the Messiah. We see the Annunciation story depicted in numerous works of art, painting, sculptures, because it is the special story of God revealing his intent to make God's self-present in our everyday world. 
The angel Gabriel greets this common small town young girl with a message that must have been overwhelming. Gabriel's first words are, Rejoice, favored one. The Lord is with you. Luke tells us that Mary is confused by and wondered about the greeting. What is amazing is how Mary kept her cool during such an unusual experience. The angel tells her, do not be afraid. And that simple reassurance was enough. The angel then goes on and describes how Mary will give birth to the Messiah by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be. Do any of us believe that we would respond with such confidence? Mary answers without hesitation. She doesn't ask a lot of questions. She doesn't need extra time to weigh the options or figure out how it might affect her family. She just gives it up in faith. And she says, let it be just as you have said. Now, Mary's life had very little value as a woman in ancient Nazareth. And as an unmarried pregnant woman, she was at risk of being stoned to death had Joseph not agreed to keep their engagement. And still she says, let it be with me just as you have said. Mary heard and followed God's call. In today's gospel lesson, we'll hear the visitation story. And I want to share that with you now. It's in the book of Luke, the first chapter, at the 39th verse. Mary got up and hurried into a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill the promises he made to her. And Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is my name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Now this is the part of Mary's story where she hurries off to visit Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is Mary's much older cousin, much older cousin, who is pregnant. She's married to Zechariah, a temple priest, and they had not been able to have children in all the years that they'd been married. They prayed for children until finally Zechariah is visited by an angel who tells him that Elizabeth would have a son. And Zechariah questions the angel, resulting in the angel taking away Zechariah's ability to speak until the child is born and given the name John. This baby is John the Baptist. Elizabeth's pregnancy, similar to Mary's, was not free from challenges or issues. They were just different challenges. With Elizabeth being well past childbearing age, there were social stigmas regarding her pregnancy. There were surely concerns for the health of the child and how she would keep up with a baby at her age. And with Zechariah not being able to speak, she may have had serious concerns about what that meant for their future. 
Despite the concerns and the fears of both these expectant mothers, they come together in this meeting and they exhibit great joy. They exhibit joy for what God is doing through them. Mary and Elizabeth knew of God's promises to rescue God's people from tyrannical rulers and oppression. They were living in a time of brutal oppression from Herod the Great and the Romans, and they trusted in the prophetic hope of the coming Messiah. Their hope and joy rested in God. Elizabeth is joyful as she proclaims the blessing that God bestowed upon Mary. Elizabeth's baby is joyful. She tells Mary that the baby in her womb jumped for joy. And Mary rejoices with a song. It's more commonly known as Mary's song, but it's also known as the Magnificat, which was recently performed here by our liturgical choir. It's a song of praise that proclaims Mary's joy, God's greatness, and God's faithfulness to his people. Now, I read it earlier from the Common English Bible, but I want to share with you a few passages as they appear in the Message Paraphrased Bible. So Mary begins in verse 46 by saying, I'm bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. And then of God, she says, His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. And then of God's promise, she says, He embraced his chosen child Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. Mary knew some of what was going to happen to her, but then again, she knew very little. She trusted that God was working to fulfill his promise, but she couldn't completely understand how. She must have been unsure of her future in some ways, and she had to have had some real valid fears for what God was calling her to do. But despite all of the unknowns Mary faced, she still sang the song. Her role in the fulfillment of God's promise was not a short-term commitment. She would bring Jesus into the world, but she would have to wait to see his promise fulfilled. She had to wait for the term of her pregnancy to hold the holy child. She then had to wait more as she cared for Jesus growing up into adulthood. She watched and waited as he led his ministry. Mary had to wait. The most painful waiting was watching her son crucified and have her world turned upside down. And she waited again for three days until the resurrection. The resurrection that turned people's beliefs about Jesus completely upside down. During all of that time, Mary didn't know exactly what she was waiting for. Such is trust in God. I think most of us look upon Mary as someone who is extraordinarily special. And she was. But she wasn't. She was ordinary, marginalized, and clearly not worthy of God's favor as it was judged by social standards of her day. Martin Luther said that Mary represents us all. We are all Marys. We too have no right to expect God's election into his favor and grace but he has elected us. He comes to us, and that shocks us, confuses us, and scares us. Trusting God can be difficult. It can be so confusing to try to discern what God is calling us to do or how he wants to use us. But maybe we overthink it. Maybe because we can't specifically identify a message from God, we don't feel called but each of us is called to be his hands and feet in this world. God's call for us in our ordinary lives is to do ordinary things that can turn lives upside down. 
our lives, and the lives of others. There may not be a visit from an angel involved, but God is calling each of us to step out in trust and deliver the message of love and hope that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, as our waiting for the joy of Christmas comes to a close, let's remember that we know how Mary's story turns out. We know how Jesus' story turns out. Scripture reveals their stories and God's promises to us. But are we questioning it? Are we hesitating to embrace it? Are we weighing our options before we believe it? Mary didn't, and neither should we. There are people in our lives who don't know the joy that comes with faith in Christ. They don't feel the unconditional love and forgiveness that Christ offers. And it's our calling to share the joy and love of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection as we grow in our own faith. So let's share God's love in our actions towards others, as well as in our proclamation. And let's remember Mary's joy as we do it. Mary's baby, God in Jesus, turned the world upside down with love and grace. Believing that, trusting that, might just turn your whole world upside down. And may you sing praise to God as it turns. Join me in prayer. Holy and merciful God, as Advent draws to a close, may we all feel your love and grace in our lives. Guide us in our faith to overcome our hesitations or doubts about all you do for us as your beloved children. Keep us mindful of the joy you promised to us and help us to share that joy with others. Help us to hear your call more clearly and help us to trust our call as Mary trusted hers. All this we ask in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>